What is high frequency trading? People talk about this in many different ways, many different fields. People who are brokers, people who are in banks, people in hedge funds, retail investors, institutional investors, operators or dark pools. They all talk about high frequency trading and they have strong opinions about this. Why? Let's see first with Leo Cooperman. For Leo Cooperman, a hedge fund manager at Quantum, he says high frequency trading is destructive. Uh, another relevant person in the industry, Mario Gabelli, also thinks that people in this industry should be taxed, the transactions should be taxed. On the other hand, you have people like Warren Buffett who, when they look at, at the stock crash on May 6 last year, he thought that this is probably only a glitch, not really something fundamental that could impact the quality of the markets. So these prestigious people definitely talk about this industry. We'll see why they are focused on this. How can we define high frequency trading? Basically, we're going to be looking at different strategies run by people in banks, in hedge funds, proprietary firms as well, that are basically looking at capturing alpha in different ways. In the past, we used to think about my retirement funds. I'm investing now. Hopefully, when I retire, I will be able to collect the money. And hopefully, by then, my investments might have grown in value. So we're looking at ranges of 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, and that was fine. However, when you think of people in high-frequency trading, they are not looking at those long-term horizons. They are looking at horizon as long as seconds or milliseconds because there's an opportunity there also to capture alpha. So definitely there's a little bit different perspective in terms of directionality. People in high-frequency trading, like people also in hedge funds, might not be looking at the fundamental value of an instrument, but rather at the variation, at the volatility, at the potential to capture a spread in, in a minimum amount of time. How this could be organized as a prop firm in a bank, it could be a proprietary trading desk in a bank, it could be a multi-service broker dealer, or it could be a hedge fund, or it could be a small firm started by the partners. Some of these small firms, they usually invest only their partner's capital, so they don't respond to any other investor, uh, given the fact that the returns are very high and they don't want to basically open the funds to other investors at that moment. What are the characteristics of high-frequency trading? First of all, what you heard and what you see also in the title of the book, speed, speed trading. When we talk about speed traders, we're not really talking about traders like you and I might be. We're talking about computers. We're talking about quants running programs, developing programs and programming the computers to be able to capture alpha discrepancies. We're looking at collocation. And what do we mean by that? Exchanges. Basically, they open the field, they rent the space for either a small high-frequency trading firms or for service providers who in turn rent it to other high-frequency trading firms. Why do you need to be that close to the exchange? Because any difference, any location, distance will matter. At the end of the day, you want to be the first, at least for some strategies, and therefore that can only happen if you are next to the exchange, and that's held by collocation. Very short time frames for establishing and liquidating positions. As I mentioned, if I'm going to be a retiree in a few years, I want to make sure that my investments will be there when I retire, that the investments have grown in value. However, in the case of high-frequency trading, I'm basically looking to get in and get out in the market very quickly. Therefore, it doesn't make sense for me to hold positions for that long. If I'm lucky, I should be able to get rid of a position in seconds. If, I'm bad luck, if I have bad luck, probably I'm going to need to hold positions overnight, which is not the goal. The goal for high-frequency traders is basically to go home at night flat, Cash at the, mo at the beginning of the day, cash at the end of the day. So you don't have any risk overnight in your positions. So that's another key important characteristic of high-frequency trading. And the other element also is that high-frequency trading will rely on liquid instruments. They're going to be trading, let's say, Berkshire Hathaway. I mean, the most probably unliquid, not liquid stock. They're going to be looking at liquid stocks. Like in the past, it was Citibank. Uh, now it's probably Bank of America. Stocks that trade very frequently because that's where they're going to be able to trade in, trade out very quickly. And of course, and that's something we're going to see later, they're also looking for stocks that have a low value compared to the potential to make profits. As you know, in high-frequency trading, the profits can be very small. It could be in the range of one-tenth of a penny per transaction. Therefore, it doesn't make sense to trade a stock 
that is going for, let's say, $40, where you can find a liquid stock for $4. High-frequency trading has been in the markets, has been in the press, and people in the industry still don't all have an opinion about this. Uh, in particular, there were some hedge fund forums where some people don't have an opinion about high-frequency trading, some people don't understand high-frequency trading, and some people don't care. Why? Because some people are trading now to sell in the future, to sell in a year, in two years. That's their strategy. And they are not concerned about people buying in, buying out in seconds. For them, it might be good because they might, and they might be getting liquidity at the moment. They might be getting the liquidity they need when they want to buy and sell. But they might not be concerned that people in this industry might be doing that. At the end of the day, if they want to sell, they are concerned they will get somebody to sell to them.